Hey, what's going on, people? It's SGZ here from the Spartan Game Zone, and in this video, we'll be counting down the top 10 legendary weapons manufactured by Vladov in Borderlands 3. I asked you last week which brand we should kick things off with, and you overwhelmingly said Jacobs, but I had a look at what's coming up next, and the wedding invitation, a limited time Jacob Sniper, should arrive in time for next week through the as yet unannounced Valentine's Day events return, so it'll follow after this one whatever happens. Today it's the guns from Mother Russia, whose makers don't mess around with attachments or low fire rate weapons, and I'll be letting you know how you can get them, what they're best at, and how you can have them hitting their hardest. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like, and if you're enjoying the content and you're not subscribed, hitting that sub button really helps out. Don't forget to let me know what your favourite blood off weapon is, and let's crack into it. We open this countdown of the top 10 legendary weapons made by Vladov with the Shredder Fire, a blistering assault rifle that has an increased chance to drop from Raging Titan, the final boss of the Slaughter Shaft. The Shredder Fire can come in any element including kinetic and fires at an almost unbelievable 16 plus rounds a second, making it the most rapid firing of all the Vladov guns. It can also come in an Annex variant which fires 2 projectiles but consumes 2 ammo per shot. Speaking of ammo, it chews through it faster than a starving monkey can down a banana, but each of its bullets leave a dent. Just brushing over the trigger is enough for your target to be instantly deleted, especially on Zane who can up its fire rate even further. Like a lot of blood of weapons, it also comes with an underbarrel attachment. Most commonly a grenade launcher which helps to intensify the good time, but if you really want to dial things up to 11, find yourself one with a twin barrel. It's incredibly rare, but it makes this gun even more insane. Next up, the Ogre, a non-elemental explosive AR that has an increased chance to drop from Anointed Alpha, around here in the Anvil, as part of the quest, Malevolent Practice. The Ogre fires explosive projectiles that spew out of its barrel all willy-nilly. They don't really go where you want them to go, and they don't get there very quickly, but it's close enough for it to do some heavy damage. It's incredibly well suited to Moe's, who can enhance all it has to offer, and on her with a splash damage build, you'll never have to reload, with the Times 2 variant being her best. With it, you can overwhelm your targets with a horde of explosive projectiles, screaming get out of my swamp as you keep that trigger held down. It's a good explosive assault rifle that'll bring many an enemy's death, and as they draw their final breath, you can comfort them by saying, It's all Ogun now. Number 8, and it's the Miscreant, this time a pistol, which is exclusive to DLC 3 and can only be dropped by the Quartermaster you fight here in the Blast Plains. The Miscreant is a lot like the Ogre, although it has a much smaller mag size and fires a decent chunk faster. However, it benefits from two key things, and that's the ability to come elemental and spawn with the barrel attachment. The attachment it spawns with is always the twin barrel, which doubles its projectile count for reduced accuracy. It's at its best when that double barrel is spinning up and many rockets are hurtling towards your enemies. One small mag can cause some heavy damage, and because it fires explosives, it's another great choice on modes. Now for the Iron Cannon, a DLC 1 launcher as accurate as it is deadly, which can come in every element including non-elemental, and can only be dropped by the Fabricator at the very end of Jack's Secret. The Iron Cannon must be charged before it is fired, and consumes either 6 or 7 ammo per shot. That's a lot of ammo, but a fully charged shot has no problem pulling mammoth damage numbers. It's imperative that you get a times 2 version though, as you're gaining 90% more damage for just the one extra bullet, and if you want to go all out on that one shot potential, grab one with a 390 anointment. It's not that well suited in standard combat due to its very high ammo consumption, although its splash damage radius will help it clear a group. It's best while bossing against opponents worthy of the damage a single shot can bring. The Laouda finds itself in 6th place, a sniper with a high rate of fire, 
which can come in all available flavours with an increased chance to drop from tremendous wrecks. The final boss of the Cistern of Slaughter. The Laiuta was king in Borderlands 2 and remains a top sniper rifle in Borderlands 3. It retains the same effect where its bullets split apart after travelling a little while, upping its damage by 200%. That forces you to use it in medium ranges and it's extremely damaging when you judge it correctly. Its damage never stops either as it couples a fast fire rate with a small downtime on reload, allowing you to unleash the next mag before your targets even know what hit them. At the midway point it's the sickle, or more specifically the boom sickle which has an increased chance to drop from anointed x4. You fight around here in the anvil as part of the quest malevolent practice. Boom Sickle is the rarest gun on this list as you need to farm for the prefix on top of everything else, but when you get it, there'll be no looking back. It's untamable and uncaged beast firing a large amount of explosive pellets which each detonate with force. On a splash damage mode build, you feel every hit as each of its 10 pellets is enhanced to upscale its damage. Although modes can fire forever, it has an extremely large magazine pool, taking from the AR reserve so there's no cap on the havoc you can wreak. Now for the Oogie Boogie Man, an elemental sniper rifle that is exclusive to arms race and it has an increased chance to drop from this chest, although I found mine hiding under my bed. The Boogie Man is a sniper rifle with almost limitless potential. It fires elemental tracer beams at a rapid rate that tear through your opponents. It has a high chance not to consume ammo, which greatly extends the life of each magazine. It's also a fantastic choice on Moe's, her best sniper thanks to it counting at splash damage. Occasionally on kill it will spawn a friendly ghost who I think might be Casper, which hunts down and terrorises your foes. With it in your hands there's no doubt that boogie knights are always the best in town. If you understand that reference then props to you. Now for one of the big boys, the Backburner, a devastating alien barreled launcher that has an increased chance to drop from the Agonizer 9000, who you fight at the end of the Guts of Carnivora, but only if you're a Mayhem 6 or above. The Backburner fires a single supercharged projectile that explodes into a thunderous roar on impact. From the impact point a vortex spawns sucking your enemies into the danger zone as damaging merv grenades pound the ground around them. It does consume 3 bullets per shot, but that's a great bargain. Because it's engineered by Vladoff, it comes equipped with a lightweight trigger allowing you to fire quicker than you'd expect from a launcher, and although one shot is already plenty, you can always fire some more. Runner up today is the Monarch, the ruler of the Assault Rifle Kingdom which can come in every element including non-elemental and drops the quickest from Kilovolt around here in Electra City but only on Mayhem 6 or higher. The Monarch gets its power from the sheer amount of bullets it fires, combine that with the typical blood of fire rate and you have a weapon with a DPS that many guns struggle to match. It fires poor projectiles for the cost of 1 ammo, but you can even get a times 8 variant to double down on the pain. It's simply unrelenting and that's before you even realise its bipod attachment increases its power by twofold. With it out you'll be incredibly slow, but rip through targets in half the time. It's great on everyone, perfect for mobbing or bossing, and has a particular affinity with fadeaway black who with it can annihilate anyone they set their sights on. Before number 1 is uncovered let's give a shout out to some honourable mentions, the first one being the Phaser, an assault rifle that can come in any element including non-elemental, and has a higher chance to drop from Atomic, you fight here in the Tanzadir Ruins. The Phaser is pretty much your standard Vlad of AR, fires quickly with a healthy magazine size, but it's the underbarrel attachment that sets it apart from the rest. Switching the firing mode will reveal a high damaging plasma shotgun, 
it's in there where its peak damage lies and as long as you have ammo in it it will always regen so you can keep coming back to it overall it's a good assault rifle with a great unique effect but its base damage is unfortunately still lacking the last honorable mention I have is the Damned, another assault rifle. This one can come in any element, including none, and has an increased chance to drop from the Agonizer 9000 you fight here at the end of the Guts of Carnivora. The Damned is a little strange, as like most Hyperion weapons, it supports a front-facing shield. That shield both helps to protect you and has a chance to reflex bullets back at your attackers. It is something, but it won't force you to aim and you can use it how you'd like without getting penalized. It's been buffed a couple of times and now deals good damage, able to rip through enemies fast without too much ammo spent. We're here, we've done it, and at number one today is the Light Show, a powerhouse pistol that comes in all elements including kinetic, and is exclusive to DLC 3 with an increased chance to drop from Lazodactyl, found around here in the Obsidian Forest. The Light Show is a monster, not the quickest firing or the most damaging, but it's the one Goldilocks would choose and she knows what's best. It fires four pellets which zip out of its barrel like ribbons and lacerate anyone who happens to be hit by them. It has no recoil at all but it fires in circles, making it hard to be pinpoint accurate. It's perhaps the most reliable weapon in the game, dealing heavy damage on every Vault Hunter. Both the Backburner and Monarch have a fair play for the top, and could be here in different circumstances, but nonetheless, Vladov is blessed with some of the most damaging weapons in the entire game. So that's all for this video, I hope you enjoyed it and learned of the top 10 legendary Vladov weapons in Borderlands 3, and don't forget we're hitting up Jacobs next week. If you did, consider dropping a like or subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next one.